speaker for today, Mr. Maneshi Sanwar, who is a Managing Director and CEO at Voice Back Analytics Private Limited. He is an engineering graduate from IIT BHU, Varanasi, and MBA from IIM Ahmedabad, India. He is a leading retail and marketing professional with an extensive experience in duty-free brands and retail. Manishi has operated in various leadership roles with LVMH Group in India and China. Previously, he was a managing director with DFS Group, CEO of Flamingo Group, the biggest duty-free retail in India, and CEO of watch and jewelry division of LVMH in the Indian subcontinent. In his entrepreneurial journey, Manishi is leading Voiceback Analytics Private Limited. Voiceback Analytics is focused to provide data analytics-based solutions to business problems. As a part of prestigious startup founders hub of Microsoft and solutions partner of Microsoft, Voiceback Analytics has developed level access to open AI the backend of chat GPT and access to recent launches and development. VoiceMap Analytics is active in creating solutions using chat GPT and OpenAI for their customers. Let us welcome Mr. Manishi on stage. Good evening everyone. Good to see a lot of crowds uh, on this nice uh, afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, DJPC for giving us the opportunity to come and talk about a subject which is uh, quite uh, contemporary, so to say. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Anil Pramadar, uh, who has been uh, you know, uh, one of my primary conduits in understanding the industry. Uh, Chad Deputy is, you know, during the course of the next one hour, uh, we'll uh, talk about a lot of things around ChatGPT AI, uh, and I also will go a bit technical at times just to showcase or explain how it works at the back end because uh, a lot of you, I think everyone would be using it in some form uh, during their day's work, but, but largely trying to understand how does it work and what actually it is uh, can help you ideate on how you could use either solving your everyday problem or uh, solving uh, or creating solutions for your business. Uh, second thing is that, you know, uh, chat GPT people tend to mix terms of uh, GPT, AI, ML, you know, people use them very seamlessly, uh, talking as if they are uh, same group of terms. I mean, just to give you a perspective, uh, these are very different sciences, they operate quite differently. Uh, artificial intelligence is, you know, uh, what typically refers to creating computer systems which, uh, which mimic human intelligence. Uh, you could be using AI in a lot of your production, you know, we have a lot of manufacturing processes now. You could be using it in a lot of your manufacturing processes. Machine learning is a sub-science that got developed during the late 90s, uh, largely saying that it can learn from itself. So whatever. And not only does it do you start from a problem, but uh, it will learn from that problem. Uh, deep learning is something again is a term which you will hear now and then. Uh, deep learning is a is a group of uh, uh, let's say algorithm group of uh, sciences which on paper uh, they work very much like a human brain works. So the construct of a deep neural network is inspired by uh, by a human brain. And therefore, it's quite an thing. It got again got uh, got developed in late 2015 onwards, and that's deep learning is the uh, is is the, the key thing which has made this generative AI human like uh, thing so cheap and uh, so intelligent. And then the last part is something which we would talk about a moment, which is called as generative AI. Uh, largely, generative AI refers to an refers to a science where computer system can behave, can talk like human beings or can understand like human beings. Uh, and therefore, uh, as we go during the day, you know, what all can it do for your businesses uh, would largely revolve around processes or places or pain points which you had. Uh, 
in human in machine understanding human language. Uh, so the capability is largely your ability to give a voice command uh, and make a machine work, uh, or vice versa. Uh, so generative AI, what is special about uh, so-called generative AI? One is that it, it is natural language. It can understand a sentence, it can understand a group of sentences, it can understand what you are trying to solve. Uh, but within it, uh, something very important is that what is referred as intent recognition. It, if you give it a paragraph, it will be able to understand what you are trying to say. One line. Uh, dialogue management is another security that it can follow up dialogue. So, you know, what I told it now, it will continue. So, if even I have a discussion, I will ask you something, you will answer. When I ask the next question, I don't have to give the previous background because it is following the flow uh, as it is happening. Uh, and obviously natural language generation comes from its ability to put words uh, in a way like a human being does. I mean, so it actually, uh, after every word it recalculates the probability of what should be the next word and therefore when it comes out and talks to you, it is talking, you feel there is a human being sitting at the back. And the last point is multimodal, which tech is not fully reaching there, but it, it is somewhere there where these systems will, today you have chat GPT in the app, where you type a question and it responds back in a timed way. Multimodal is a scenario where they will start talking, listening, seeing. Uh, so a single system you don't have to, you will you don't have to type, you can actually talk. Uh, so it, it, it can listen, it can speak and it can see. Uh, and there are these kind of capabilities, multimodal capabilities which are already uh, in some parts available now. So they are much like that typically surprised us six months back, I'm very sure, you know, another six months down the line, you will, you will find these kind of systems where uh, they will they will talk and see. Uh, so the AI technology is here, I mean, it is quite a flavor of the season. It is, uh, you know, there is no event which goes without somebody discussing all these kinds of things. One uh, one big graphic which all of you would have seen that how, how little time it took charge to reach 100 million subscribers. I mean, can you compare? To different successful stories, I mean, we are not we are comparing to a WhatsApp or a you know, Instagram or a Facebook or TikTok. Uh, the amount they could so quickly charge it to cast the fascination in human history, uh, nobody has till now. Uh, so that is the level of interest, and simply because of its ability to do things which was supposed to be human. You know, before this, they were said writing a poem was a human thing, you know, no machine could have written it. Uh, so, Chat GPT, you know, in a general sense, GPT are, you know, are, uh, it's a technical term, it's called the generative pre-trained pre transformer. So it's an acronym uh, for a technical term and I will not dwell too much uh, on this slide, but this, uh, this uh, GPT is the main main architecture, it is the backend layer which, uh, which gives its capabilities uh, to perform. Uh, the other thing is that, uh, you know, a lot of people, Sometime, or it looks like uh, GPT was trained on all these questions. It is not uh, that it has it, it has not been given these questions. It is not been programmed to say if this is the question, then they give this answer. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that it is humans have trained it. Uh, so GPT has not become what it is today without any human intervention. It is not just a piece of code which somebody has written. Uh, you can uh, you know you can. It, but, and there are a lot of stories in the West that, you know, uh, sub-paid workers in African countries were used uh, to outsource this kind of job. But there was an army of people who, how it starts is that you first tell, an army of people tells him that, you know, this is the question, this is the answer to get. Basis that the system runs. After that, you ask a question, system gives you an answer, and this group of people will tell whether the answer was correct or not. So it ranks, and slowly and slowly it runs. So in that sense, the system is learning on its own. I mean, once human beings have trained it, uh, it can learn on its own. But it is not that just a piece of code which has been written and is answering and doing things. Uh, thousands of people have worked and fed it data to tell it what uh, is right and what is wrong. Uh, and as a language model, like I said, it essentially speaks one word at a time. You know, it, it, it gives a word, then it calculates the probability of what the next word should be and then brings it all uh, to it. Uh, 
the other thing uh, which uh, is that you know GPT itself, uh, though a lot of people uh, we call it as chat GPT, at the back end there are multiple programs. So essentially there are uh, there is something called GPT 3.5. So the current GPT works on GPT 3, then there is a GPT 3.5, and there is a GPT 4. Uh, GPT 4 already can see photographs. If you give it a photograph, it can summarize the photograph. Uh, so GPT 4 can, you know, if you feed it a CCTV footage, it can tell you whether the manufacturing process is happening correctly or not happening correctly. Uh, parts of capability it is still not there to reach that part, but 4 has the capability of seeing an image and answering an image. Uh, then there are other things that I think GPT a lot of people have heard. I don't know how many of you have heard of, of DALI. Uh, yeah, I can see some nods. So DALI is what uh, what GPT-3 does on OS, DALI can do on images. Uh, so especially people who are probably on the advertising side, on the creative side, uh, have started using it. But DALI is, uh, is a cousin or a brother or sister of GPT. Uh, but like GPT talks in sentences and words, DALI can talk in images. Uh, it can create images for you, it can create photographs for you. Uh, then there is another, another cousin or brother called Codex. Uh, which again, if there are programmers and developers out there, they would uh, be knowing. But Codex has the capability, much stronger capability to write actual codes. Uh, and therefore, there are these discussions which happen that uh, a progression of GPT can result in, uh, in loss of employment. Uh, because if there are 20 people who write a code today, uh, GPT can do the same job very, very quickly and very efficiently. Uh, and the other thing which we have to understand is that these are still very early days, we are still talking about the first version which has been launched only for six months back. Uh, you can imagine what what kind of an evolved animal it will become, you know, over two to three years or time frame. So what you know, what does it typically do? And so far it was mostly just trying to explain the theoretical construct of what GPT is, how does it work. You know, what you see at the front end is a GPT and the back end are models like Diamond C3.5, 4, Codex. Uh, and these are, you know, few examples and I think this is the part which most people would have used that you give a prompt. Uh, and giving a prompt is now becoming a skill set. Uh, so there are, you know, there are good prompts and there are bad prompts and there already are prompt experts. I mean, they know how to how to ask a question so that that GPT can give you the correct answer. Uh, and you know, one of the things which people say that it will cause unemployment and there is an alternate view which says that the nature of employment will shift. Uh, so it's already shifting, you know. The skill set previously was how to write a good marketing line. But today, the skill set probably is how to write a good form that chat GPT can give you a good marketing line. So the, the skill set will change. Uh, but like I said, you know, it can it can write a tagline, it can write on the on the third image. You can see it's a uh, it's a simple code, uh, so it can write a programmable code which you can copy from there and paste it in your system and it runs. And we do, you know, in our company, almost everyone today would have a chat GPT window open while he's working on a system and not flipping between the two. Uh, and the fourth one is uh, is is a part of Dali. Uh, wherein you say, I want a ball of fire with vibrant colors and that even give you an image of that kind. Uh, now in terms of, uh, I'm coming you know, to, to more uh, relevant usages on, so there are four, generally people are saying there are four kinds of use cases which will evolve. Uh, like I said that, let's not confuse between an AI, ML, chat GPT, uh, these are generative AI. Their core function is to behave like human language. Uh, and therefore, wherever you have situations where uh, you are, you know, a, a manpower is being used to decode a human language, uh, whether it is a call center, whether it is, you know, uh, somebody uh, transcripting, uh, all those situations would have very, very early solutions where you can pick up. So, in your businesses, wherever there are situations where a human word, or translating a human word, uh, following a human word is becoming an issue. Uh, chat GPT can straight away be used. And first uh, big use case which is evolving obviously is content generation. Uh, so a lot of uh, letters already are being written by chat GPT, a lot of essays are being drafted by chat GPT. Um, 
Now, in content generation, these are fun things which you can also do, but at a corporate level, uh, there are solutions that a chat GPT will answer to all call center queries. Uh, so, your help desk uh, can nearly be automated because it will it will read, it will understand, it will reply. Uh, similarly, there are solutions where you are saying that a chat GPT can create a website for your brand. Uh, so, you just have to define uh, what is your brand, what does it stand for, uh, what are its colors, what is your uh, idea on uh, on uh, chat GPT on, uh, on your uh, website uh, and it will give you full website end to end. So those kind of solutions are already uh, evolving. Uh, customer call center, handling voice calls, handling translation, handling languages. Uh, I was having a discussion with somebody where uh, the question of capabilities in vernacular language uh, came out. Even in my company today, I am running a project in Kazakhstan and Russia, wherein we are doing uh, we are doing analytics on Russian language with nobody knowing Russian. Uh, so it's already possible. And then we were discussing uh, to to realize, and I don't know how many have tried that actually ChatGPT already has uh, vernacular capabilities. It can handle in Marathi, for example. And though people who are very purist could still point a finger because the Marathi of Chat GPT may not be very perfect, uh, but again, these are very, very early days. Uh, uh, as you go along, you would have. So, if you want, you know, a Gujarati uh, answer and a Marathi answer and an English answer and a Hindi answer, uh, Chat GPT would have. A, it still has a capability today. Maybe it's in, it's Gujarati and vernacular will not be perfect, uh, but it can still handle those kind of issues. Code generation, like I said, code generation is. Uh, uh, is already a very very strong uh, use case, uh, but port generation is also being used in the manufacturing at least on the telemetry side. You know, we were discussing some time back that a diamond manufacturing the lab grown process has to be very very controlled. Uh, you know, parameters have to stay within a range, uh, and though it is humans who uh, who could manage those parameters, but a machine can probably do it much faster. So there would be processes, there would be steps within the manufacturing processes which will come uh, wherein uh, our, our, our program will be able to handle it much better than it. Uh, and semantic search is, uh, is your, uh, the feedback which you get from your customers, the reviews which you get, uh, any kind of uh, you know, customer email coming to you, how do you analyze, how do you decide you know, whether it is good or bad. So semantic search is essentially uh, reading a statement and, can, and Segregating it, so you know whether this issue belongs to uh, quality of food, whether this issue belongs to quantity of food, this issue belongs to price of food, or this issue belongs to because Zomato or Swiggy or whoever the delivery partner has done a good job. Uh, so similarly, like I said, multi-model use cases where you know again, uh, different parameters are evolving. You already have, uh, you know, you already have entire layer of call center analytics. So Historically, you know, if you are answering, you have a thousand people call center, you are answering to customer calls, how do you evaluate the performance of an agent? Uh, so today, you can evaluate the performance of an agent because you can read the discussion, you can um, listen to what the discussion was. This is that discussion, you can evaluate whether the person, uh, whether he did an upselling or not, and if he did to what extent and how happy the customer was. So a lot of these cases can actually be Evaluated, which will bring in a different level of efficiency uh, on the base system. So broadly, there are three skill sets which uh, these systems will uh, will give. One is the creative skills. You know, uh, writing, you can they can write uh, very very good stories. ChatGPT can write very good poems. It can write very good content. It can write legal documents. It can understand legal documents. It can give uh, advertising ideas. It can make a presentation for you. Uh, you can give it a subject, even this presentation I could have told it to give me a presentation to that. And maybe I did that. <laughs> so, you know, one is its ability to do, you know, uh, sorry. This, so this is an example of... So the second is its example is of, you know, of general English skills, I mean, which are uh, this kind of a question that I love your product but delivery was delayed uh, and bad. Uh, 
Now, is it a quality question? Is it a price question? Is it a service question? Uh, these systems can do a fairly good job of sorting them out. Uh, you know, there are use cases where you try to pull information from customer emails. Uh, you could have you, you dump of customer emails. In this, you know, you are saying, I just want to segregate the uh, text input and provide some context. Uh, so, if you want to pull out, you know, who sent this email from a full body of email, you just have to give one one command and it, it, it comes back to you. Uh, similarly, this is a discussion where, in, you know, if you if you look at the instruction, uh, you are seeing what was the reason, what was the sentiment, was the customer upset, was it happy, was it sad, uh, and just by giving one command, when you get a reply, uh, you can do that. And just to clarify, uh, most of the things which you do on a chat GPT, you are doing on a UI, uh, but almost everything can be done at a programmatic level. So when we use these kind of systems, we don't use the interface which we use, I mean, we are the backend talking system. Uh, so, so, these are some examples now. Uh, the third use case, uh, which is a very, very evolving use case, and we'll have a, you know, we'll have a demo of this, uh, is a customized chat GPT. So, one of the bigger problems, if you realize the chat GPT, is that today it is, it is very good, it is very intelligent, it can do a lot of things. But there are two bottlenecks, I mean one being that the information base of chat GPT is at 2020 or 21. So it doesn't know anything which has happened after 2021. Uh, that's one problem. Secondly, it doesn't know internet. Uh, so to, and because they want to be very sure that it doesn't learn wrong things quote unquote and therefore chat GPT doesn't have an internet access. Uh, so if you want to search for something, uh, you can't do it. Unless it has happened before 2020, and therefore chat GPT uh, And then the third issue is that people, the, the core use case is that if you as a company have your own manuals, you have your own HR policies, you have your own data sets, you have your own websites, chat GPT doesn't know about any of these things. So a larger use case which is evolving, which takes us to the direction of your technical boards, call center executives, e commerce assistants, service assistants, uh, is the capability for chat GPT to work on your data. So now we are coming to more towards the developer side where if you have a customer data set and you want to ask a question that what did customer X purchase from my store A during the month of October 2020, uh, today it can't do that because uh, it is trained on a certain pre-decided set of data. Uh, and this is a very, very strong use case because there is capability now that you can train chat GPT on your data set. And data set could be your company manual, it could be your HR policy, it could be a newspaper of yesterday, it could be a textbook of your kid. Uh, but you can train chat GPT on a selected data and after that you will answer questions uh, on that data set. Uh, general you know, technical uh, configuration, uh, more to, uh, to, and the way they are, they are structuring these services, so one of the issue, uh, one of the issue of these services is that people are a bit worried that and especially if you are a corporate and a lot of things which are there have got an IPR, you have to protect them. So a big question comes that how do I ensure when I charge it to my data, uh, then uh, everybody will know about it. Uh, so to handle that problem, the way these systems are being developed is that actually your data lies on a separate location, let's say with you. And there is a, a programmatic uh, of chat GPT. So the way it happens is that you will ask the question, chat GPT will ask this question to your data, uh, this data will reply back and it will convert it back to your language. So essentially, uh, GPT in between is becoming a translator. It is not accessing your data, it is not, it is just finding the answer from your data, coming back and giving it to you. Uh, now this kind of a use case today, so this is, you know, essentially, uh, we are talking about in terms of capabilities and if you want to imagine what all it can do, uh, is that you have the layer of, you know, 3, 3 4, which are like I said, back then, algorithms that not worry about them. The middle layer is your data. Uh, it could be, you know, whatever internal knowledge databases you have, it could be uh, training manuals, it could be structured, unstructured, SQL, Excel, PowerPoint, it could be anything. Uh, and then there are your prompts. So if you want to know what was the turnover of my company in 2019 
for a reason of something or if you want to know what did somebody did last week, what was the attendance of a particular person, uh, all those queries will become natural language because the the bottom box will talk to the middle box and will give answer to the problem. Uh, and this kind of technology is the actual use case where uh, chat GPT will then start behaving uh, as your slave uh, rather than today being an internet fun tool which you can go and ask and you know, have fun. Uh, so to, you know, we were doing it and to, to uh, just give a small demo on how uh, this can be done. Uh, we replaced the middle layer with the brown diamonds. I mean, it's quite a hot topic. Um, uh, so we said, you know, is there some way uh, we can create a version of chat GPT to show to people which will talk about a, a, a small set of subjects uh, out there. I have, you know, I uh, mentioned Anil Prabhakar, uh, my good friend. Uh, you know, so he did help me out. Uh, there is a magazine uh, called Labro Times. So we trained the chat GPT on few editions of Labro Times uh, uh, so that it has the capability of answering uh, whatever has been written uh, in, in the publication. So, maybe what we are going to do is we are going to run a small demonstration. And we will also expect participation from you. But before I do that, I will say a few words about my friend Manisha. So when I was in my late twenties and early thirties, I thought I had answered to everything. I know everything. But today I'm in my sixties and I'm not very sure whether I know that. So I met uh, Manishi twenty-four years ago, and we were working for the same company, Swatch Group which is the largest manufacturer of watches in the world, in the Swiss company. So he was fresh out of college. I am Ahmedabad, very prestigious institution. And I was a salesman. I am still a salesman because once you are in sales, you are always in sales. So uh, our seniors requested us to uh, tell, her, tell him about the market and how it functions. Life has come full circle. I have to learn from him now. So, at one point of time, uh, I was, was supposed to teach him and learning from him. And learning, as they say, is a continuous process. It's an end by itself. So, what we did was, uh, Labron Diamond Times, which is, among other things, I am the editor of that magazine. So what we did was, we published the data of the uh, last six months uh, to Manishi. And uh, we are going to run a small demo. But let me also tell you that, Last year on 5th August 2022, we launched the magazine. So we are celebrating the first anniversary. This is the anniversary issue. And I would like to thank you. I would like to present a copy to Manishi as a token of appreciation for spending time with all of us. Thank you. And what we will do is we will encourage you to participate. And all those who participate will also get a copy. <laughs> so this is how the data came to us. We got, you can see on the screen, these are few articles from some big scans, particularly, you know, uh, GB data file. So we built, uh, and I have, we have created an app on it, uh, and we asked the same question. So I am asking the same question to main chat GPT, uh, and the same question to, uh, to the trained chat GPT to say how different the answers would be. You know, if you see first question, so the top one is uh, uh, is chat GPT answer, the bottom one is our customized answer. Uh, our lab grown diamonds manufactured in India, which is as of my last update in September 2021, India is leading country, but that's how far it knows and nothing beyond that. Uh, the uh, the trained app says yes, lab diamonds manufactured in industry in India has experienced uh, policy decisions, exports to retail billion. Uh, it is. Uh, it also tells me because this is a test version. It also tells me uh, from which article or where it is pulling this information. Uh, but so I, you know, uh, flavor of the season. What did uh, Mr. Modi gifted to Mr. Biden? Uh, Chat GPT says I got my last update. There was no specific information. Uh, uh, gifts exchange between heads of states are typical symbolic and things like that. Uh, the trade app says during his state visit to India. Uh, we all know uh, 
So since we are on DJ C platform, let me pose a question. Who is Mr. Vikram Shah? Vikram Shah. So it, it answers and it is giving a citation. And obviously, as of now, uh, it tells us from where it is giving a question. But I can ask, you know. So let's have some fun. Our, our, you know, our lab diamonds, let's say our lab diamonds. How expensive are they? So let's invite some volunteers. Please come and ask any question. Please come. What would you? Would you like to come? Any one of you? No. You are not uh, familiar with lab diamonds. Please come. Please. Yeah, please come. Come. Come forward. So ladies first, she will ask the question first. So then. I would like to ask a question regarding the price history of platform lines. So price history, uh, how have... Uh, it may or may not know because it has been framed on a certain set of uh, documents. Okay, you have an answer. <laughs> you know, it is very difficult. The problem with this generating AI is that it's like if I ask the same question again, uh, it could give a different answer. It will definitely be people, uh, the content will be the same, but it can talk in a different language. Excuse me, I want to ask is the shine remaining forever here? here? Hi, this is Swadesh. I want to ask, is the shine remain forever or it may... Lusha, you can say Lusha, you can...